So now I'm just going to go through some commands that may be helpful as you continue drafting in Rhino. I'll share this Rhino file with AJ, so if you guys want to follow along, then you can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go through and show you a few commands that may be helpful as you continue exploring Rhino. So the first command is offset. You'll find that a lot of commands in Rhino are relatively self-explanatory. Offset will just offset a line a certain direction and distance. So if I go here and I change the distance, let's say I want to offset it 0.25 inches, I can type that in and you'll see it change the distance and I can offset it to either side. I can do the same thing with curves or circles. So if I were to offset to the outside, I can keep doing that. I can also do it with my circle. And I can change its distance as I wish. That's a big circle. <laughs> There we go. The next command is ray. So if I have one line and I want to have a group of lines that are equally spaced, I can type in array. And I can either type in the number I want. So if I want six in the x direction, I'll just keep six. In the y and z direction, you can't type in zero just because of Rhino's um, defaults. So we're just going to leave it at one. And then I'm going to Click my first point for when I want it to start, and then my second point for how far I want to space them. And you'll see that now I have six equally spaced lines. You can also use array um, and type in the distance. So if I want them to be spaced 0.3 inches apart, I can type in 0.3. And now you'll see that I have six lines that are 0.3 inches apart. The next command is orient. So say I have this rectangle that's at an angle and I want to orient it to my square. I'll just type in orient. It will ask me to choose two reference points and these reference points will are what will be used to line things up. So I have one and two and then I'm going to do one and two here and now you'll see that it is lined up. The next command is interp curve. This is helpful if you're tracing something or you're trying to get more of a curve that doesn't follow a circle. Um, this may help in some of the details in your drawings, but it works by you plotting points and then it will draw the curve between the points. Next I have trim. So say I want to make this a sharp corner. I don't want this line sticking out. I can type in trim. It'll ask me for my cutting object and then it'll ask me what I want to trim. So I'm going to trim this top part off. And then I can do the same thing with a circle. So I don't want these two lines sticking outside the circle. I'm going to type in trim, click on my circle, and then trim that off. I can do the same thing kind of in the opposite direction. So say I want to have my line extend to this line. I can type in extend. It will ask for my boundary object. And then I can select the curve I want to extend. So now you can see that this line is now touching my vertical line. And I can do the same thing here. If I want this line to touch the edge of the circle, I can type in extend, click on my boundary object, and then extend the curve to that edge. I can also use group. This may come in handy if you have a bunch of different lines and you just want to group them together for a second to organize your drawing a little bit. You can type in group, select the objects that you want to group, and you'll see that now it took it from two pieces to one whole. So again, I have two pieces here. I want to group them into one object. Select them, type in group. Now I have one object. Now if you have a grouped item like these two here and you want to ungroup them, you can just type in ungroup and then it'll take your objects that are grouped together and ungroup them into separate objects again. I'm going to do the same thing here. You can see they're two separate objects now. Another command that may be useful is fillet or fillet. I honestly don't know what's the right pronunci pronunciation. Um, people make fun of me for both, so we're just gonna go for it. So you type in the command and then you can set a radius. That's the radius that this curve is gonna turn into from this angle. And then I'm just going to keep it at a 0.5 inch radius. Then you're going to select your first curve, select your second curve, 
and you'll see it turned that into a um, curved corner. And I can do the same thing with a chamfer. A chamfer pretty much takes this angle and draws a line. Um, so I can show you that, chamfer. And then select your first curve, select your second curve, and you'll see now I have a line between the two instead of a sharp corner. And fun fact, all the columns in building five have chamfered edges. Another useful command is scale. So say I wanna scale this square down to a smaller size. I can set my reference points and scale. I can also type in a scale option. So if I wanna scale it by two, select my base point, and then I can just type in two. So now it's scaled it by two. And I can do that with any shape. So with my circle, I can scale it down and I can scale it up. So scale works in two dimensions, but if you wanna scale it in one dimension, you can do that as well. It's just not gonna keep your proportions. So I can type in scale 1D, which means one dimension. And now I can turn my square into a rectangle. I can turn my rectangle into an even skinnier square, um, I mean rectangle. So this can also be useful. Another useful command is divide. So I have this line and I wanna divide it into five equal segments. Well, instead of measuring it out and drawing my lines in, I can just type in the command divide. And then let's say I wanna break it into five even segments. I can press enter. And now you'll see that it broke my line up into five even segments with these points. I can do the same thing, but with a distance. So if I wanna divide, but I don't know how many pieces I wanna divide it in, but I know how far apart I want them to be, I can click on length. And then I can type in the length. So I'm gonna have them divide into one inch segments. And now you'll see it broke my line up into one inch segments. And I can do the same thing with my circle as well. Another command is split. So I have this square, but let's say I wanna split it in half with this line. I can type in the command split. I can select the object I wanna split and then select my cutting object. And now my square is broken into two pieces by that line. I can also do it with my circle. So I have my circle, but I wanna split it with this line. I can type in the command split, select the object, select the cutting objects. And now I have my circle broken into two pieces. Now, if I have lines that are not, oops, if I have lines that are not connected, but I want them to be connected. So say I split my square, but now I want it to be one continuous line again. I can click on both the lines and type in join. So you'll see that it took it from two lines back into one. And I can do the same with my circle. And if any of you all have your drawings and your lines are broken up into multiple pieces, you can type in join, it will make it one continuous line again. You can also use the hide and show command. So say I wanna focus on just this square right now, but this line is getting in the way and I just wanna hide it. I can type in hide and it will temporarily hide the line for me. It's still in Rhino, it's just not appearing at the moment. And then I can type in show to make it reappear. And I can do the same thing with the circle. Say I wanna get rid of this line, I can type in hide, gets rid of the line, type in show, and now it reappears. Copy is another useful command. You can type in copy and then select a point and then copy from that point and continue copying your object. You can also do it with multiple objects. So say I have this square and circle and I wanna copy them. I can just keep copying. You can also set a distance for copies. So if you wanna copy at a certain distance, you can type that in. I also have move. So say I wanna move this circle into my square. I can type in move, select a point on the circle, select a point on the square, and now they're within each other. You can also just move it arbitrarily, so like that. Isolate and show are also helpful ones. They're kind of similar to hide and show. 
So say I just want to see the square. I don't want to see anything else in my Rhino space. And I can type in isolate. And it will temporarily hide everything else. And then if I type in show, they'll reappear. And ZS is another helpful one. So say I'm zoomed out all the way. I see this little circle. I want to zoom in on it. I can type in ZS. And then it will zoom into that circle. So if I'm zoomed out and, oh, I want to zoom it in to ungroup, then I can type in ZS and it will zoom into that. So I hope this was helpful. As I said earlier, a lot of the Rhino commands are relatively self-explanatory. And another helpful way to explore and gain experience with Rhino is just to read the prompts that Rhino gives you. So like I said earlier, when I typed in offset, it asked me the distance I want to offset, if I want the corner to be sharp or around. Um, experimenting with these options will help you learn a little bit more about Rhino and it will kind of guide you in using these commands.